Hello, it's uh, Brent's in history, Ross here, and I'll just make it quite clear, this is a bit different, but uh, this is not a political channel, I have no party political affiliations at all, or any organisations, or networks, or campaigns to promote any kind of political thing, alright, just make that very clear. What I am interested in is preserving our history, and particularly, um, not particularly, but one of the examples is up uh, above St. Genev, up on the Common, there's some very, very important stones, such as what we call the Polaris Stones, which seems to mark out um, a star map and it's the centre point. It's very important for South Wales. Uh, we've got Martin Hutchinson here has been with me. He's uh, registered and discovered uh, rock art, uh, and it's, the whole area is very, very important. Now, unknown to all, well, I didn't know myself until uh, Martin contacted me. I saw something Martin put up on Sunday. There's a public consultation uh, period beginning today which is for um, a wind farm. <laughs> it's basically just going to go right through the middle of all of it. And I, you'll see the report in a second. Uh, unfortunately, my normal camera's not working. I'm going to use my phone. But what we have is a situation here where, um, well, it's been advertised, apparently. And I'm looking, if you look behind me on the notice board there, you will see the advert. So, you know, if you can't spot that, more fool you, apparently. Because uh, uh, they reckon there's been a couple of ads in the local paper, which well, I'll try and find out. They didn't have any details of when they ran or what the ads looked like. Or presumably the same as the poster. I think that's what he said to me. I've been in there. I've had a word. It's it's dreadful. It's absolutely dreadful. I mean, for example, they're talking about um, taking the local things into consideration. One of uh, two, actually, of the windmills or the turbines, whatever you want to call these monstrosities, are... Uh, right above the text that says kin on their map on their maps they can't claim ignorance as for advertising there it is if you want to know this meeting's on i'll just show you how it works all right back to me there uh, <laughs> uh like i said i didn't unfortunately my uh my camera wasn't working but i have taken some photograph sorry my uh, using my phone it's very very worrying and i'll talk you through it i'll try and keep this short uh just give you an idea so uh this is where the, the meeting, uh, the public consultation, it's been held. If you look on there, <laughs> not much to give it away. Is anything going on? Here's the notice board, by the way, on the right. I'll just zoom in on that. So there's the notice board. It's clearly not advertised on the notice board, as they claim. Okay, just uh, give you an idea about that. Uh, what apparently is the advert I think you're supposed to notice up oh, and that's why I said on that on the video earlier of me outside the building if you can't see it more fool you because there it is <laughs> it's a little piece of very dark a4 with difficult to read white out the blue and it's quite high up so I've got it zoomed in here we go so it does mention here uh, it doesn't say much about the consultation really it tells you all about COVID-19 and all the uh, whatever you can't turn up groups and I don't know whatever it says um there we go so butte energy i'll talk more about them in a second is developer of onshore wind that onshore is a fancy way of saying it's in the land it's on the hills and things as opposed to offshore out at sea somewhere and solar energy parks using the latest technology to deliver low cost renewable energy butte is ambitious and optimistic about the potential of toyn Huel energy park toyn Huel is located in the heart of south wales and this this to me is a real slap in the face. An area that has long harnessed its natural resources for energy production, i.e. it's been screwed over for a couple hundred years now. There's been coal mines, there's been ironworks, there's been all sorts of dreadful things done to your land. So hey, let's screw it up a bit more, why not, eh? Right, so the energy part represents an opportunity to provide clean and new renewable energy, blah, blah, blah. Significant long-term local economic benefits. Well, judging by all the other uh, wind farms in South Wales, unless you know different, please leave on the comments or contact me. I don't know any local benefits at all. This company's from Scotland. They're international. I'll show you a bit more about them in a minute. All right, so uh, uh, slightly out of order. This is the entrance to the event. Again, no advertising. There is a piece of A4 on the back of this door. So when the door's closed, you can see an A4. <laughs> because it can't go in there. <laughs> so you're supposed to find your way around and walk in. Um... Oh, there you are. This is on the front of the building, all right? There you go. Massive advert. Someone scribbled this with a marker pen. It's round the back, all right? And I didn't bother part, uh, booking an appointment. You don't need to do that. It's a public consultation. You just walk in, okay? Um, they say they uh, uh, talked to them as they got the official uh, 
safety guidelines are 50 people can be in the building. Well, there's five of them hanging around, not really knowing anything or doing anything, so there's room for 45 more people, okay? So I'm letting them fob you off with that. Right, so here's gives you an idea where it is. So Cardiff's down here. Here's the Seven Estuary. Very historic area. And it's a massive, massive area. They talked about 20 turbines, but this is the first stage, as you'll see on their own um, literature. Right, so um, I'll show you the website. None of this is on the website, as they said it was. I've had a look, nothing there. Well, I can't find it, so apologies if it is. It's not obvious. So here we go. Uh, this is the what they did when you go inside there. I should take a picture of the room, actually. Ah, kicking myself now. I didn't have my camera, and I was sort of switched off a bit. Uh, they just had some sort of uh, notice boards, you know, like on trestles set up with pictures on them. Quite interesting pictures, and I shall go through them now, all right? Just quickly to give you an idea of what's going on. So the design of the NG Park will evolve over the coming months in response to consultation. So I want to hold them to that, right? It's going to evolve. If, we, if this thing's going to go ahead, let's see how it evolves, shall we? Let's see how they bear in mind the information we're showing them. I don't have an excuse. Further down the line, say, oh, we didn't realise, because we're telling them, right? Martin Hutchinson put me onto this. He's an archaeologist. He's found stuff up there. He's let them know. He told me about this. We were there. To, um, I joined in there this morning. Uh, right. The location has been chosen due to its technical and environmental suitability for an energy park development. Good site access. I think I'll put more roads across the common and everything. Optimal wind speeds. A lot of this is on common ground, as they mentioned, right? So they're not meant to do this. Um, some of this is also uh, scheduled with CADU and places like that. There are registered monuments. So it's um, if you or I went in there and just pulled the rock up off the ground, we get prosecuted facing a potential fine and even imprisonment. You don't touch scheduled monuments, unless you're these guys, apparently. This connection is going to be available in 2025, all right? This is not happening. I'll show you the timeline. This is not happening sometime in the future. You want to get involved now, all right? About Butte Energy. Ugh. You look into them, they're actually part of the massive RSK, which is like engineering, infrastructure projects. Uh, that's who. That's what they're for, okay? So as it says here, develop onshore wind, solar energy parks. Uh, and this is this is weird. When you read it with your eyes open, everything about their literature and sales pitch is aimed at um, building companies. <laughs> it's like, give us your business, we'll do it for you. We're growing so fast, we're worth a billion pounds, we're the best. This, none of this is aimed at the public but to say that, you know, we'll make really certain that the historical site's left alone, it won't be an eyesore, all that. No, no, no. So what they're doing, they're maximising uh, renewable energy, long-term community fund. This is your bribe, okay? You might get a bribe out of this. Um, sometimes you might get a club out of your rugby club or something like that. But it, this is it's just a bribe, and it's a tiny, 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 tiny amount compared to the damage and everything that's going on. I'll also link up the Wales Vision 2040, a very frightening document where you see all the uplands of Wales are going to be developed in a similar way. It's like the coal mining days all over again. The, the, it's going to be the, another rape of the fair country, uh, as um, it was called in those times. So we're going to de developing sustainable environmental and recreation initiatives which increase the local value of the site. No, the local value of the site is as it is now, historical, open common land, people can walk up there, it's wonderful views. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of homes affected from a viewpoint of view. The, the noise, if you've got these places, they're horrible. It's not really necessary anyway. If you read the, the, the one thing, it's quite amusing, in that uh, Wales 2040 thing, is it does mention there that Wales is already, like a, a net, should be a net exporter of energy, produce about 15% more than we consume. So why are we doing this here, right? And also, if we're selling it to every other places, where's the dividend? You know, where's the payback? All right, environmental impacts. You can pause the video, go back to it, whatever you like. Uh, what they call environment is any wild animals being affected. All right, nothing to do with history. None of that, okay? So, the application, the Welsh Minister making an informed decision. Well, we need to inform the Welsh Minister what's being lost, okay? All right, it's okay. So, you can read all this um, PR nonsense about why we need it and yada yada. The fact that these things cause enormous environmental damage does not seem to count at all. Or that um, there's only a certain life for the, the turbines when the, what you call them, the, what, the rotors, the blades, when the blades finish their time, don't forget they're 200 metres in total height. So you've got like a, a 90 metre blade. Uh, when it's finished with, nothing's recyclable, it's just chopped up and buried. The massive concrete plinths is buried on, they're permanent. They're wrecking balls. 
All right, so about the project, you can read all this itself. Now, a bit I do want to pick out, though, the early stage proposals include for up to 20 wind turbines, right? <laughs> this, is the, yeah, this is phase one, right? Housing developers do this. Did it near me, they got uh, approval for 50 houses. I think they're up to 480 now and counting in a totally unsuitable site. Anyway, here we go. Um, the energy park will be designed to respond to local environmental constraints. Good. Well, here's some, all right? You're putting it on a historical site, the whole area. So, right, you can read that yourself. And there are lots of happy people jumping up and down on a hill. Um, hang on a second. It doesn't show any windmills on this picture, I noticed. Just spotted that. <laughs> Why don't you show them jumping up and down with some horrible uh, turbine behind them? And they're not looking quite so happy because it's ruined their environment. So this can give you, this is their pictures, all right? I have not made this up or anything like that. They kind of grayed out the turbines. They're pretty much brighter and uglier than this. But that's the kind of view that's going to be taking place over the valley. That's just the first 20. I have counted them. There are 20 there. Um, so all these houses now, they're all going to be affected. That historical area, which is our primary concerns, affected. Uh, so this is one of the views you'll get of it. That's how it looks now. Bad enough with these horrible things on it. And it's going to be like that. It's it's devastating. Another view. And this is their mock-ups, right? So what they've done, they've just photoshopped some uh, turbines on. I don't know if they're the right scale or anything. Maybe they'll be bigger. So here's the total area. As you can see, it's huge. A huge, densely populated area. This St. Genev, the town itself. This is up towards... Now, um, I'll just pop, you, know, you can see there's Martin, he's got his own map out and he's checking against the sites to see what they're going up against. The first one he's noticed is number seven there. That wind turbine is pretty much on top of uh, what we call the Polaris stones. Uh, you see the video, I'll put a link in the description. Incredibly important site. Um, all around here, these are important sites. And the one which, there's, there's a couple that strike me. <sighs> I, I, sorry, I, I was trying to be calm there. I get a little bit frustrated, a bit angry, really. If you look here, under 17, it actually says Cairn. It's on the map, right? So I asked them, how do they choose these sites? Of course, there's no archaeologist there. There's no one with any information. There's no directors of the company. There's no one can actually tell you how they chose the sites, what the process is. Like, <laughs> how can you have the turbine on t right on top of an ancient Cairn? I mean, it's hard enough to get things on the map. As you know from other videos, loads of ancient sites get removed off the maps. But this is their map. It's there, look. It's right there. All oh, this is heavily populated. Um, <laughs> it's bizarre. Another one over here, if you come up to this side, um, which is over to Kilvanith. So you're in Kilvanith, it's going to be right on top of you. And you've got another one here. you got Egloy Sillen. Uh, actually, right, I can overlook that myself. So you just got to have, I've got a personal interest. I've got skin in the game. I'm a local resident, as it were. So Egloy Sillen. Bam! Right there on this ancient church site, which uh, we've got lots of history to show this could be a very ancient site. The irony of this, when they say it's been uh, harvested for energy before, is this is St. Genneth, the, the scene of the most famous uh, mining disaster where hundreds lost their lives. So yes, it has been exploited for a long time. You're quite right. I need coming to do it again. Then we've got Jill. We've got uh, Toyn Gwyn, which is um, another burial mound. Wham! Have a, have a turbine on top of that one. It's, it's, a, it's disgusting. It's a disgrace. And uh, there's Martin. He's just checking out the sites. Um, there's a map. If you want to pause and look in, what this does, it shows you the view out. It's basically all the people are going to see this from that direction. I don't know what point these things are really. Um, now this is the scary bit. Look at this. This is how quickly these things happen. All right. This is why we didn't know anything about it. They only started scoping. It says here September 2021. Although it does say here mid-2021, which would imply they started earlier, but don't mention it for some reason. All right, so they've done the surveys. That's all done, apparently. They've walked the site. No one asked for locals, like Martin knows that we've got uh, Julian, you know, well in Bren. We've got loads of people up there know the area extremely well, locals. You can't just wander up. It's a, it's a vast, like, moorland-type area. With ferns this side, the time they were there, the ferns are up to your waist. You can't see anything. So they just wandered around going, yeah, nothing to see here. And that's their MO. That's their, that's the way they do things. So then you got the consultation with stakeholders, which is happening now. You've missed today's. It's already happened. There are more. I'll put those details up. Then we'll do the assessment of effects, which I think is how much opposition is there going to be. So if you don't register now, that's it, all right? Design freeze, which is hilarious, because spring it's back on again. Consultation with stakeholders. 
So why are they getting all this feedback and then freezing the design? Shouldn't they be doing those changes they said and moving things to reflect the feedback that they've had? Apparently not. So Spring, they're going to talk to us again and say, yeah, there it is, get over it. In goes the application, it's all going to be done uh, next summer. It's just a few months, the whole thing's done, all right? And this stuff, building work start soon afterwards and it'll be online uh, 2025, which is only a couple of years away when you think about it, right? It's about the project, these massive things, heights up to 200 metres. Oh, you see now up to 20. Right, they gave me a questionnaire, which is a pathetic questionnaire. There's nowhere at all we can write in specific uh, problems or sites to look out for or do you think it's a good idea? Are you upset? You know, are you pissed off about it? None of that, okay? So, uh, thank you for turning up. If you have five minutes, complete the questionnaire, be lovely. How did you find out about the event? Well, a vigilant local, Martin, told me about it or he put it up on his Facebook, which I happen to see in the Ponty group. So, well done, Martin. Yes, I'm a resident. And then I love this. Do the effects of climate change concern you? I mean, it's a ridiculous question. Question should be, do you think this is going to make any bloody difference, this trashing of your environment? Uh, do you support renewable energy generation? Well, at what cost is the question, isn't it, you know? If you're going to put a little spinny thing in the river and generate some electricity, that would be quite okay. But if you're going to destroy a whole historical site and create a complete eyesore that people have to pull up with for generation after generation after generation, which is going to make 0.0000000001% difference to the world's climate, then no, 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 you know? So uh, why there's no to put any questions. Uh, so Toyn, he will... I should, they got these real smarmy voices when they talk. I shouldn't make personal comments. There's just some bunch of youngsters there. One's supposed to be the project manager. Oh, I've got his name. Let's make him famous. Seems he was so helpful. Matthew Horton. Thank you, Matthew Horton. And his email address is Matthew with two T's. Matthew dot Horton. H A U G H T O N. Matthew dot Horton at Butte dot Energy. So please email him with some comments. I also put the websites up so you can try to get all some other people. So uh, please let us know if there are any other comments you'd like to make. I've gone through all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, complete disregard for history, the sites, no specific information. The representatives there know nothing. They just go, oh, yes, thank you for your feedback. You know, oh, honestly. Why are there no directors there? Why are no archaeologists there? Why are there five people hanging around not doing anything or knowing anything? It's like security or something. There's my email. You can contact me. So can Nate. I've told them. And I want these comments registered, I've told them that as well. It's on the record, it's on this video as well. Now, comments and suggestions about future consultation events. Yeah, how about letting people know about them? That'll be good. Uh, better publicity. Uh, and have some people there who can answer questions. It's kind of the point, you know. <laughs> I mean, I made all these comments, but no one wrote them down or anything. No, no record was made of the comments. We have scribbled some of them on here, and I've handed this in. And that, oh, that's it, by the way. That, that's, that, 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 that's, that's your feedback questionnaire, okay? Uh, another viewpoint there. So these are the other consultation events, okay? Uh, so check out, as you can see, uh, we've got tomorrow is the YMCA at Abertridur down the road. Friday, Slam Bradach. Uh, next Wednesday, Nelson Institute. And uh, next Thursday, the big one I think is going to be the last one. And again, they've got these blinking restrictions, but just turn up, all right? You'll be fine. If they cause you any trouble, then uh, deal with it when you get there. Because we need to turn up and say something. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly uh, jump back onto the website so you get an idea about who we're talking about. All right, so this is them. This is um, see, this is a, this is a thing as well. It hasn't really got the company name on it. It's just the project. You know, it's it's like it's a separate company or something. It's not. It's part of a much bigger company. Okay, our mission is sustainable world now and future generations with these things everywhere. Okay, it's not actually. If you read the, if you read the their parent group, RSK, their, their mission is to become huge and make billions and billions and billions of pounds building things, not stopping things getting built, building them, okay? So uh, there's their website. It's a bit of a mouthful. Toyn, Toyn Huel Energy Park, dot Wales, about us. Doesn't really tell you anything. There's the project overview. Come on, give me the thing. That's all you get. None of those pictures we just saw in the, in the presentation. Yes, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. But this is before you've trashed it, okay? These planted tree forests, yeah, this um, Natural Resources Wales is bad enough. But this, this, oops, sorry, this area is going to be trashed, okay? That's a quick look on there. Then look on the community one. 
What are they going to say about that? Oh yeah, all happy. No windmills in the background. That's probably why they're so happy. I don't understand. They seem to be showing off it's going to cost more than the usual price per megawatt. Doesn't make any sense at all to me. Suppliers, this is a joke. Because it says here it's going to be local. Want to work with local people. I'll guarantee you these contracts have gone already. This is a huge multinational company. It ain't about local jobs, right? So here's their... Um, this is the archaeology team that are going to protect our interests, remember? Um, these are the ones who are going to make sure the site is fine. Fine-looking bunch of people. I have had looked into their profiles. They, they all board, they're all involved in commercial archaeology. Um, there you go, just so you can see who they all are. And they're all based in Scotland, as far as I can tell. <laughs> I don't know who took these photographs, man. And there's their offices. Uh, let's see if you can spot what's missing. Uh, the project's in Wales, there's a clue, all right? There's their massive offices, and they're part of the RSK group. This is the archaeologists now, right? Not the developers. The archaeology group. <laughs> they're part of RSK. And it's off their website, so I could click on it, I suppose, but I'll go to there. Um, oh, yeah. This is RSK services. Read the report, go and have a look, and it's all about um, massive projects productivity, engineering, all this kind of thing. You can download their brochure. It's just got all about what they do. Growth of the business, company structure. Everything's aimed at getting more business, more growth. It's not an environmental company at all. And this is the ones who now own the archaeologists who are going to be um, protecting the site. So can you imagine uh, somehow the developers, archaeologists, are going to turn around and say, awfully sorry, we can't do the wind farm. We've had a look, we've spoken to the locals, and there is some very important archaeological sites. It's cancelled. Do you really think that's what's going to happen? <laughs> I hate to sound so cynical. They're a massive worldwide international company worth a billion pounds. Oh, and there's the kind of people they work with. It's all big building companies and um, engineering companies, drilling. They go around the world basically saying, nothing to see here, folks. Carry on with the building. And this is this is what they're interested in. You know, look, look at the growth of their business. Whoosh. I want they worth now billions or something. All these companies they're buying up, and they bought up the archaeologists. Anyway, have a look at that yourself. Enjoy reading that. It's quite depressing. And I also want to draw your attention again. Please, please look at this, which is um, oh, I want to show you that page. I have to go to the top, but you won't know what I'm looking at. Which is the Vision Wales 2040, which is this thing, the national plan. It's terrifying. Over 7,000 uh, houses a year average are going to be built. All the uplands, they're not recognised for historical value. They're all going to be developed. It, this is a government document I don't think people are aware of. I wasn't. Um, it's terrifying. <laughs> it's absolutely terrifying. Um, what else do I have to say on here? Yeah, I was trying to find out more about the directors and stuff, but it's all quite difficult. You can look at people like the uh, CEO of RSK. His name's Alan Ryder. You can find out about him, all the billions and billions he's worth, and how his, his objectives in life are to grow and become the biggest company in the world. And there's RSK on Wikipedia. You can see it. It's nothing to do with history, archaeology, or anything like that. But the only archaeology company. So, there you go. Um, get involved. Oh, I did mention one more thing. There is a virtual event, isn't it? Right, let's just see if we can find that a second. It's not the Headland Archaeology. Where were they today? Why are they absent? Why aren't they there? Can you speak to us, please? If you're the ones who are giving us the, the sign-off, the clear-off. Um, oh, Anyway, anyway, there is an online um, on the 16th of... So I'll put something else up about that. Did I put it in the presentation? I think I must have done. There's the area effective. It's huge. Okay, yeah, yeah, here we go. Right, so... Um, okay, there you go. Uh, yes, there will be... Um, I'm assuming the masks and social distancing won't apply for a virtual meeting, but the world's gone so mad, who knows anymore. And you can go to that website there, which I'll put a link in there. And contact them. Please contact them. Please get involved. I'm not fighting a campaign here. You know, I'm just raising awareness. And I'm really hoping that other people will decide to get involved and do something. Because our history once is gone. As I say at a lot of end of my uh, videos, at the moment, a lot of our history is hidden. It's not yet destroyed. But, you know, there's some people out there trying their best to uh, make sure it is. So, till next time. A very sad, heather.